What's up guys, Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery and today we're going to be pitting the iPhone 11 Pro against this guy, the red Scarlett W 5K cinema camera. So you probably saw recently that Apple has announced their new iPhone 11 Pro and with that camera, with that phone came some pretty big camera upgrades. They've added a third lens to the back of the camera. You've now got a super wide, a wide and a telephoto lens. And about every year, Apple makes like pretty significant upgrades to their cameras and it's pretty exciting. Like I'm always watching that just to see what they're doing with their cameras and how much better that technology is getting. It's pretty cool. And every year I feel like when the new iPhone comes out, uh, all the filmmakers in the world are wondering, is this iPhone actually a viable camera for shooting my films with it? Or you know, if I don't have the money to go get a cinema camera or get a more expensive camera, can I shoot on an iPhone? And that's what this video is gonna be about today is what is the difference between an iPhone and a cinema camera? Can you use an iPhone for regular shooting or can you not? What are the actual differences uh, between them? So there's always a lot of YouTube videos like this comparing the two cameras. I feel like in a lot of situations people are uh, kind of shooting and color grading the red footage to match the iPhone footage and uh, you know putting the videos out there that say hey look you know these cameras are so similar and you can shoot amazing things on an iPhone and I'm 100% all for that sentiment. I, I love the idea if, if you followed me for any amount of time you know that I'm always talking about how you need to get out and start creating with whatever gear you have and don't wait until you have the right gear in order to create. So I'm 100% for that. But saying that an iPhone is the same as a red camera or even close to the same as a red camera is not exactly truthful. So in this video, I'm going to give you an honest comparison between the two cameras. We won't be doing any color grading or touching up the images at all. I'm gonna show you exactly what the iPhone image looks like compared to the red image. And then we're gonna talk about what the actual differences are because I want you to see two things in this video. The first thing is I want you to understand how amazing the iPhone camera is. Like in reality, for a thousand dollar camera, and, and honestly, that's not even fair to say because there's a, it does a lot of other things, right? Um, so it's not even really a thousand dollar camera. You're getting a lot for that thousand dollars. But let's just say a thousand dollars for a thousand dollar camera that fits in your pocket and goes with you everywhere. It's pretty incredible. And these cameras are getting better every single year. Apple's done some incredible things with their software and with their technology in order to make these cameras better. And, uh, and they're actually crossing into that realm of being able to be used as a filmmaker's tool, which is pretty crazy. Um, so I want you to understand that throughout this video, how amazing the iPhone camera is. But at the same time, I also want you to see what the real difference is between an iPhone and a $25,000, $50,000, $100,000 cinema camera because there is a difference. So through this video, you'll be able to see what you're actually getting when you're dropping lots of money for a cinema camera over just buying an iPhone. So what we did is we took the iPhone 11 Pro and rigged it up with the red Scarlet W so that we had the lenses right next to each other and that you'd be able to, we'd be able to go out and shoot some stuff and you'd be able to see the comparison side by side of what the two different cameras look like. We shot in indoor settings with studio lighting, outdoor settings with bright sunlight, overcast, uh, and even some stuff at blue hour and towards night at the end of the day so that you can get a feel for a lot of different scenarios and what it looks like and how the iPhone and the red handle different lighting scenarios uh, separately and differently. There are some images that you'll be able to see as you're looking at it side by side that they actually look very similar. And then there's other images where you really start to see the iPhone fall apart. And so we're gonna talk about what those differences are that actually that make that happen. Uh, why in some cases they look very similar and the same, like they could be the same camera and it's hard to tell which one is which. And in other scenarios, it's very blatantly obvious why they're different. So the first thing you need to understand in order to really grasp this concept is the difference between technical quality and creative quality. When we look at a video and, and we say, wow, that's a really high quality video, what are we talking about? Are we talking about the technical side of it 
or the creative side of it because they're two different things. The technical side is things like uh, your depth of field, your dynamic range, the sharpness, the color science. And these are determined by the camera and lens that you're shooting on. By buying different cameras or different lenses, you can actually make your image look different or look better or worse depending on the camera. And that's just the way it works. Those are, those are things that are um, under the umbrella of technical quality. Now, creative quality on the other side is things that you control as a filmmaker. It's things like lighting, um, composition, camera movement, all of those things that you do to make the image look better and look higher quality. And it's worth mentioning also that there are things that you can do as a creator that will increase the technical quality of your camera. So if you know your camera really well and you know what situations it works really well in and how, how to handle certain situations, you can, as a filmmaker, actually increase the technical quality of your image. Meaning, if you're good with your camera, you can get a better image out of it technically than maybe somebody who's not familiar with it. But for the most part, everything kind of falls into these two categories as far as technical or creative quality. So when you look at the difference between an iPhone and a RED camera, what you're seeing is a lot of differences in technical quality. When it comes to creative quality and telling a story and shooting a beautiful image, you can do that on pretty much any camera. And what makes that especially possible is the fact that most of the videos that you're making, you're probably exporting from your NLE into a compressed format, then uploading it to the internet, and then most people are watching it on a phone screen this size on YouTube. And so when you're watching something that's been compressed and watching it at a really small resolution, the reality is that a lot of that technical quality goes away. Not all of it, but some of it. And so that's where the creative quality really shines through. That's where you get to express yourself as an artist, and it doesn't really matter really what gear you're using. Um, if you're being creative with it, you'll be able to create something that people can enjoy and you can still tell a really great story. So let's talk about some of the technical things that you're gonna see that are differences between the iPhone 11 Pro and a cinema camera like the RED. Number one is depth of field. And this is probably the biggest one. Because the iPhone sensor is so tiny, it's really hard for the iPhone to get a lot of that shallow depth of field with the blurry background. Whereas on a cinema camera, you've got a much bigger sensor. And even a RED is on a Super 35 similar sensor. Um, if you go with a full frame DSLR, you can get an even bigger sensor, and then it's really easy to get that shallow depth of field. But on an iPhone, you're just not gonna get that no matter what you try. And Apple's done some things with their portrait mode that allows you to use software to add a fake or faux blurry effect to the background, which is pretty darn cool if you think about it. But when it comes down to it, those software features are pretty limited in what they can do, so they're not gonna hold up in a real shooting situation. You can really see the difference in the depth of field when you put the two cameras side by side, and that depth of field is a huge part of creating a cinematic image. So when you don't have that on the iPhone, everything comes in focus, your subject and your background, and it makes it harder for the subject to pop off the background and really destroys the quality of your image. Number two is dynamic range. Dynamic range is the ability for your camera to see into the shadows and the highlights simultaneously. So cheaper cameras typically if you have them exposed uh, for the shadows and so you can see the shadows really well, then your highlights are gonna blow out. Or if you have them exposed for your highlights, then your shadows are gonna be a noise. And when you get a more expensive camera, even a DSLR or into cinema cameras, you'll start to see this difference in dynamic range in the camera's ability to see the shadows and the highlights at the same time. So you'll notice that the iPhone image is clipping and is completely white in some areas of the screen where the RED camera is actually able to pull out detail in those images. Another thing that you'll see in dynamic range is the highlight roll off from the camera. So the RED has this really nice smooth highlight roll off which means that the, the colors that are rolling from really bright to clipping actually roll off very smoothly. Whereas in the iPhone you'll see that there's a hard line between the brights and the highlights and it causes this really, really sharp digital looking edge. Third is sharpness. 
The red has a really nice, soft quality to it. It's soft looking, it's very smooth looking, but it's not unsharp. It has enough sharpness to look good, but it's also not over sharp. When you look at the comparison between the red and the iPhone, you really start to notice that the iPhone is really over sharp. There's a lot of sharpening happening on this camera, and it makes it look very digital and harsh looking, whereas the red is very smooth and flattering on the subject. I think this is where the iPhone really starts to fall apart, is when you're shooting a subject. Basically, if you're shooting landscape shots or wide images of big scenes where the subject is pushed so far back that the detail doesn't really matter, um, everything's so far away that the color doesn't change, there's not really a lot of dynamic range for the camera sensor to work with, then this is where you can get the iPhone looking really good, these big wide shots, because it's not really that hard for the iPhone to process these images. There's really not a lot of detail for it to have to get. Um, the sharpness is fine because the things are far away. Uh, the depth of field doesn't matter because you don't have a subject in front and a background in the back. You're basically just shooting the background. And these are the kind of images where the iPhone really starts to shine. When you put an image like this on the iPhone against an image on the red, you're not gonna be able to see, again, when somebody's watching this on a phone on YouTube, you're not gonna really be able to see the difference between those two cameras. But when you get close and you start shooting a subject and now you've got a foreground and a background and you're getting in and trying to shoot the details, you can tell looking at the comparison side by side that there's quite a big difference between these two cameras. You don't have the depth of field there, the subject is really sharp, the color doesn't look as good, and you'll notice that the, while the iPhone is kind of sharp and harsh and saturated and kind of gross looking, the red is able to produce a really beautiful, soft image that looks really nice. And the last difference is the color science of the cameras. The color science is how the camera manufacturer has basically programmed its sensor to bring in light and then determine what the color of that light should be. And red has a whole lot more R&D and research going into actually the color science of the image. And so it's able to produce a much more natural looking image that is more appealing. If you look at the iPhone image, you could really tell that the colors are a little bit strange sometimes. The skin tones aren't, aren't quite right. And you get colors that are really saturated and punchy and not very natural looking. So anyway, there's a quick comparison between the iPhone 11 Pro and a red Scarlett W cinema camera. The bottom line when you're doing any kind of comparison like this is that yes, the red is a far better, more sophisticated, more complicated, and better camera overall. But the reality is that on the flip side, the iPhone is a lot cheaper, it fits in your pocket, you can take it with you everywhere, and there's huge advantages to being able to do that. Basically, if you're just starting out as a filmmaker and the iPhone is all you have, I would say don't let that stop you from going out and creating. There's so much that you can do with an iPhone and it's really incredible what these cameras are capable of and they keep getting better every single year. So you shouldn't let not having expensive gear stop you from getting out and telling stories, creating beautiful images, and creating the work that you wanna create. But as you get better and better and you're starting to charge for your work and you're bringing in clients and they're expecting you to be professional and really produce the highest quality of work, then that's when it makes sense to upgrade your camera gear and start going to DSLRs or cinema cameras. Because yes, you're going to get the highest quality image technically from a cinema camera, especially compared to an iPhone, but you never should let that stop you from getting out and creating. So there you go, I hope this video was helpful for you, seeing the difference between an iPhone and a RED camera, and really seeing where each of these cameras shines and where they start to fall apart. If you're interested in learning more about how to create cinematic looking images, regardless of the camera that you're shooting on, really learning the science and the art of cinematography that works with any type of gear, then head over to cinemamastery.com. I've got a free one hour training on there that you can watch where I show my entire process of building out a portfolio of really high quality work that has attracted uh, clients who are paying tens of thousands of dollars to work with me. And you can check that out for free. I'll go ahead and put the link down below to check it out. Anyway, hope this video was helpful and we'll see you on the next one.